Eyewitness then reported on a lot of the chaos that, as you said, started right here in this area. And that included watching people suddenly run into and Mondawmin Mall. They ran out carrying all kinds of merchandise, just looting the stores. We asked about store losses. The mall management declined to share specifics and just decided to focus rather on recovery. In a statement, the general manager says it was a dark day for Mondawmin Mall and all of Baltimore. With support of our retailers, our company, and the surrounding community, we were able to reopen as quickly as possible, and we continue to be a reflection of our community and are proud to be Mondawmin Strong. Now, the unrest also impacted my old neighborhood, and that's just uh, less than two miles from here. I went back and I visited some of my old neighbors to see how they're doing a year after this all happened, and also to talk about a place that at one time was a drugstore, then a grocery store, and then finally a liquor store. It's now gone. Nine-year-old Durrell, his seven-year-old brother Devin, and three-year-old sister Devea seem comfortable playing here in Northwest Baltimore's Henland Park neighborhood, just as I did as a child. The kids say their family moved in just before the fire last April. Looters stole alcohol, lottery tickets, anything they could grab from the corner liquor and convenience store before someone torched it. My former neighbor put his life in danger, suffering smoke inhalation, shooting this video. Veteran Willie Price Sr. says the explosions and flames reminded him of his service in Vietnam. I had semi flashbacks on war. A woman and her disabled son living next door barely escaped. The boy's wheelchair destroyed. The community offered plenty of support for LaPortia Lawson and her son Kylie, but they moved out of the neighborhood. While Lawson's grateful for all the help she received, her family says the memories here are just too painful. Oh my goodness. I just couldn't believe it. And the fire that was going up in the air, like the, in, in the smoke. Longtime resident Veronica McDowell lives across the street from what is now an empty lot. Not having this tour, what's that like? It's like something missing. That has taken a lot out of our neighborhood. Still, many neighbors say Hanlon Park remains a vibrant community. It's, it's a beautiful neighborhood, it has a lot of potential. Keith Pennick is the Hanlon Improvement Association president. He says it is a close knit community with affordable homes. The park's recreational area is well maintained, and a walk around the reservoir, Lake Ashburton, offers a spectacular view of downtown. Eight. In seven and a half years, I'll be 100 years old. In seven and a half? Yeah. Okay. Seven and a half Got years. It. Herman Pittman tells me right now he's 92 and a half. He's lived here 66 years. But you didn't move? Never. Why? I love this neighborhood. I love it. And so do my neighbors. And he's seen a lot. Well, you know that we had that um, drug situation like a lot of other neighborhoods, but uh, they all gone. Neighbors still want other problems fixed, like this dangerous okay. sidewalk. Also, home rehab projects that contractors seem to have abandoned finished. So we got dead house and dead house and dead house. You don't want to go into it. So those three are vacant? Yes, sir. All three of those houses right there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's a concern? It is a concern. Uh, housing, uh, to improve in housing. There's a lot of, there's some houses here that are, are vacant and I would like to see them occupied. And it appears older neighbors are still teaching younger ones about taking care of where you live. Durrell, Devin, and Devea spontaneously put that into action. Another point of Hanlon Park pride. I just want to have a healthy neighborhood like the upper blocks. And neighbors are wondering what will happen to that empty lot. They say if another store opens in the neighborhood, they will have a huge say in what kind of business it is. Reporting live from Mondawmin Mall, Barry Sims, WBAL-TV, 11 News.